Where the fuck is McClay? <laughs> oh. So that camera. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can just set it down to the side. Thank, Thank you. So you. <clears throat> Action. Awesome. This is episode 65 of the podcast. We are brought to you by Bang Salon. Come get all your hair needs, including cuts, natural <laughs> colors, vivid colors, extensions, shampoo and stylings, all under one roof at Bang Salon. Find and message Bang Salon on Instagram at Bang Salon at B A N G D S A L O N. Use promo code BOGCAST for 20% off your first visit. So come on down and get banged by Jordan. But if you really try to bang her, I'll fucking kill you. Ooh. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> uh, make sure to check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all the Google Music apps, Podcatchers. Make sure to like and comment. You're already going to, hopefully, you're already subscribing. Uh, let us know what you think of the guest. Let us know what you think of the show. Thanks. Sweet. Thank you, McClay. We are very excited to have our next guest. We have had many guests, uh, actors here in Phoenix in the film community who have talked about the Howie Acting School. So I'm very excited to have Carly Howie. How, Carla Howie, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good, I re really appreciate you uh, you know, taking the time to come down to talk to us. No, so a pleasure. I thought um, we would just uh, talk about your school for a little bit. Sure. Um, I know you've lived in Los Angeles and... Um, yeah. Uh, you got a lot of cool stories and stuff to tell. So um, uh, first, let's just start with the school. Um, I know a lot of a lot of uh, you know actors who do watch this show know about it, but for people who don't, um, where are you guys located? Um, maybe what kind of classes do you guys offer? Um, okay, I can tell that. All right. Well, we're located in Mesa on Baseline, across from Gilbert Commons um, Shopping Center. So we're right on Baseline, the most southern part of Mesa and um, yeah it's a two-story building and I don't know how long we'll be there because we're paying rent yeah and then kick you out anytime <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, hopefully not yeah they, but, they, they do that if the, if the prices on everything else goes up they, they say yay if you don't want to pay yeah Adios. yeah yeah <laughs> but we really like it there it's been, we've been there for three years now um, we have uh, two beginner classes, one on Saturdays from 10.30 to 1.30 in the morning, and then a beginner class from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Monday nights. And then the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday classes are scene study classes, and they're not for beginners. They're for actors who have agents and have done independent movies and have uh, done some commercials and that kind of thing. And they know what they're doing. And that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Also, six to nine. That's awesome. Yeah. And then that's it, five classes. And when we moved here from L.A., we moved from L.A. because we were retiring Oh. And so this is supposed to be a retirement. <laughs> and we told everybody we were we were retiring. And then we got here and Bill goes, you know, we know too much about acting to retire. These people, some of these people here might would like yeah. to get some of our experience. And I said, OK, we'll do one class. So we did a Wednesday class. We opened up a Wednesday class and that was going to be it. But it filled up so fast. So then we thought, okay, we'll get a Tuesday class. So we opened the Tuesday class, and then that one filled up. And I'm like, oh, man. I, so we started the Thursday class. Wow. So then we had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we were taking beginners and everybody. And then all of a sudden, I, I guess the word got out, and I started getting phone calls, um, but almost everybody that called me was a beginner. Like, mm -hmm. I really want to be an actor. Yeah. So I started the uh, Monday night class. And so I had the Monday class. It's been going over a year. It's, the, it's, a, it's a beginner's class. And then that thing just filled up, and I still was getting so many calls. And I was doing private coaching sessions, Bill and I, on Saturdays. And we were doing three 
a day. And wow. I'm like, okay, so we're doing privates, which are an hour long each, three a day uh, on Saturdays. You know what? I think I'll just start forget the private coaching <laughs> if i'm going to be there three hours a yeah. day i'm going to do a class and it just filled right up so there we go and you started this three years ago um started it three years and ago evolved, wow and, and now all five fast. of them mm -hmm. wow yeah that's incredible and it doesn't sound like retirement are you enjoying it yeah and you know it's a lot of work Especially since my husband's been sick for a while, he's he got a case of shingles, and oh, now he's dealing with that. And while he's home, trying to get over it, yeah, shingles yeah. is awful. Yep. I'm teaching all five of five classes by myself. Oh wow! Are yeah. you guys, you and um, Bill, the, on, the only two teachers? Yeah, we're the teachers? only no, no other teachers, just the two of us. We had a guy that did a teen class for us for a while, but he kept being called out of town. Um, so, and he missed so many of them. I'm like, no more. That's it. Because we don't like to miss any classes. Yeah. People are, are wanting to be there. Yeah. I think they enjoy it. Yeah. Some of them have been there three years. I know people are enjoying it. They come on the show yeah, and talk about it. Yeah. And lot. not only that, they drive far distances oh, to come man. see you guys. The people yeah. who drive. Well, people that are, de you know, dedicated and, you know what I mean, to, mm -hmm. to, to your school. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think we're pretty good. Do you, are you guys um, taking new students still, or is there like yeah, a limit? Yeah, what I, yes, I am, because there is somewhat of a turnover. So I like to interview, I meet everybody before I put them in the class. Nobody just goes in a class. I meet them before the classes on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday at 5.30. And it gives me, I have them fill out an uh, inf, uh, actor information form, one page, and I have them, um, and then I just show them around the studio, and then we ask questions. I ask questions of them, they answer. They ask me questions, I answer. And we get to know each other and get a feel. And then I, you know, if I have a spot, when I have a spot, I, I let them know and say, I have a spot for you, do you want it? And they usually say yes. And <laughs> then we work that out, and they come on in. But there are people, there's always reasons why people don't do class. Uh, they run out of money. Yeah. Uh, their their night changes, and I don't have room in any of the other. Um, they change jobs. They move. Um, there's a lot of reasons. They, you know, just. I'm sure in the begin. Is there a lot of turnover rate in the beginners classes? Because maybe it's people just trying it out, and then yeah. they're like, you know what, this isn't for me. I would say they stay anywhere from three to six months, and then they, I can either move them up if I think they're they can go into the Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday scene study classes. I will move them into one of those. Um, but they're they're pretty hard. We're a we're a, we're a class for movies and TV only. And I have thousands and thousands of scenes from movies and TV. Because over the many years we've been teaching in LA, they would come up and they'd say, oh, I just auditioned for this movie. Do you want the, I have the script. Because in LA, when you audition for a movie, they send you the whole script. So I have whole scripts. And I also have sides oh, wow. from their auditions, from all kinds of things that never went anywhere and pilots that never happen, but they're really good to work on in an acting class. I was going to say yeah. that that's all material you can use for your class. Right? Uh, yes, thousands and thousands in all TV and movies. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And that's what we work on in the scene study classes. But in the beginner classes, we do work on short little scenes so they know how to do it, monologues, um, uh, commercials, uh, a lot of stuff, and then how to audition, too. I teach them how to slate, how to be professional, how to walk in, because I happen to know the, <laughs> um, the president of Warner Brothers. And he told me, he said, okay, I, wanted, I want you to tell your, friend, your, your students this, that I have auditioned thousands and thousands of actors because I am the... I, I look at him. He was running the entire Warner Brothers in Burbank. And he said, I for, I'm the final word for when they come in and they get either get a part or not on a t um, one of my TV shows or movies that I do. I know if I'm going to hire them in three seconds. Wow. Yeah. Three seconds. It's the way they walk in. Their confidence level. Everything about them, just uh, the, their professionalism, their look, their smile, their authenticity, 
That's what mm-hmm. I look for, and I can tell. I look and I go, mm, no, I won't. I won't be hiring them. They won't be getting a job here. Or wow, I will be getting them something one of these days. He can just tell. He could. Three so seconds. So it's just that um, that confidence, in a sense, of like when you're mm-hmm. walking into a room and yeah, maybe well, just taking taking over the room y- in a sense, or you just walk in confident. You yeah. look around and you go, this is where I should be. Yeah. This is, I'm going to get this. You, in your mind, you're going, I'm going to get this because I'm the best. You, know, you just have that, that look and that feel about you. And you walk in that way with a lot of confidence. And I think that's what I kind of promote. Is that me? We, yeah. we um, teach confidence because we teach you so much. And how did how did the school get started? If you don't the, here no, in Phoenix, no, no. Oh. all the way way back, all the way back. Okay, great question. Okay, we started. Bill and I started in 1980. Wow, <laughs> at the Beverly Hills Playhouse, and the uh, Milton Katselis, who has passed on, which was a wonderful man. He was a huge director. He directed people like Elizabeth Taylor, that kind of elk. And he, um, we were living in San Antonio at the time, and he called Bill up and he said, I need an executive director to run my school system. I've got tons of classes and tons of teachers, and I have hundreds and hundreds or thousands of students. It was a big deal. He was the biggest back in the 80s. And I just needed somebody to run the whole school for me. So we moved to L.A., and then um this is from denver right no we were living in san antonio texas yeah and steve was three and he's 42 now so it was that's That's a big big uh, big deal to move up at that time so we were there and uh i worked in all the classes um and bill ran the whole thing and then he ended up getting like five classes him himself and so we had a lot of those students and then after many years doing that we broke off and started our own under our own name the howie name so very but, cool yeah but uh, it was really great we worked with a lot of really fun people so and then we did that for Years and then we, my mom got sick in Denver, Colorado, so we moved to oh, Denver. Okay. And we taught class there for 12 years, and then she ended up passing away. And so we decided to go back to Los Angeles in 2006. And then we, we had our own um, classes there for 10 years. And then by then we were a lot older. (laughs) And that's when we thought, okay, I'll tell you why. Because we were teaching classes every night from 6 to 10. The classes where we used to teach for many years was 7 to 11. So we wouldn't get out sometimes till midnight. But when you're young, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And then we changed it uh, when we came back from Denver to 6 to 10. Uh, not 6 to 10, 7 to 10. And then when we came here, we changed it from 6 to 9 uh, because we were getting tired. <laughs> I think that's a good length for a class. Three hours. Yeah. It's three, three hours. It's not like tiring everyone out and you're still putting well, a lot into it. We, we limit all the classes, all five of the classes, to only 14 students. And everybody goes, this is so big. You could, you could fit 20, 25 people in here. And I go, yeah, I could. But you wouldn't get any kind of in-depth feedback. Yeah, you'd get the tiniest little bits of <laughs> feedback. We couldn't handle anything. So with fourteen people, that's like seven scenes. We we can really give some some really good feedback. Work with people. Well, we find acting problems and start fixing them. Some of them are quick fixes, and some of them take a while. There's some pretty bad acting problems, bad acting habits some actors have. It's funny because uh, I, I I'm a huge fan of um, pre codes like like cinema, and um, uh, you watch some of those really old movies and the acting. I I don't think you could find a movie that's good acting all the way through like in from the 30s. Like it's so bad. It is so <laughs> bad. It's unreal. And I don't know. Yeah. It's just funny to see how 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 what has gone as being a good thing. You know, back then, everybody thought those were good actors to now how we see them as, like, total hacks. Well, <laughs> and and think 
some of the later actors uh, for that because they they were more um, from emotions yeah. instead of just saying the lines in a yeah. kind of a way that yeah. So and I think Marlon Brando was one of those. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah um, so. Who was a dude that mar- was married to um, Catherine Hepburn or didn't didn't marry her but was with her forever? The old school actor. Oh. Or some, not or some. Mm, no. No, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of those people that say like kind of started that that whole that whole um, acting philosophy. Or not philosophy, but like showed it on the screen for the first time. Yeah, uh, I forget his name. Well, Anyways. it yeah, it's I can see the I can see his face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it'll come to me in just a second. Um, uh, yeah, that well, it's the instead of just saying the lines yep. in a certain way, you you feel them, and all the good actors nowadays have learned that technique, um, the kind that comes from your gut, very visceral. And not not um, like Bill and I. We if we see any acting from the chin up, we stop and say you're you're showing us the emotion. You're not feeling it. You need to feel the emotion. If you're angry, we need to be scared. If you're happy, we need to be happy too. We don't want to see it in your facial expressions. Um, we don't want you to indicate it. We're really big on not indicating the emotion but really getting there and you get there through memories through remembering a time when maybe something like that happened to you and i'm um, since none of us here as at least probably hasn't murdered anybody <laughs> we don't know what it's like to kill anybody and in that case you kind of have to rely on what you've seen on tv and what it would be like to kill somebody I and mean, we all want somebody out there dead but <laughs> Maybe <laughs> and have dreams of <laughs> killing them, but um, yeah. But that's that's that would take acting. But otherwise, it's it's you know really feeling those feelings, yeah. remembering when it happened to you, so you can get it. And then acting is all in the eyes, you know. It's uh, in the intention. It must be really hard. Um watching television shows with you <laughs> <laughs> no bill because you must see like well you just bill like, groans just, and uh, moans <laughs> it's like oh god <laughs> he, no i because like he said every <laughs> almost everything has something of you know some sort of bad acting yes. and, so, oh, and yes. especially they with all you guys do. you can see it from a mile away i'm sure we can see it but <laughs> i go i if i'm going to a movie if i'm going to watch a movie i'm going to enjoy it for what it is except every now and then they'll have somebody that is just we don't know how they got the job well if they're real pretty and young we know but yeah um true so but, what are some good examples of actors that you do like and appreciate now that are showing well, you know, some good okay. acting chops? Um, Bill just voted his SAG. T- uh, oh, okay. The SAG voting. Cool. Well, it's next week. It's next Sunday. And he's been a SAG actor since uh, the uh, like 1985. That's awesome. When he paid $300 for his his dues. His yeah, t- now it's like uh, two grand, isn't it? No, somewhere? it's like 3600 Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's been SAG a long time, but we get, we have stacks and stacks and stacks of movies that they send that you watch and then you have a better idea how to vote for the actors you want, the ensemble. And so we did that today. You know, I helped him out. I go, we look, we, we did the, and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I liked him. So he did all the voting. So we're going to watch it next Sunday. You can't say who he voted for? Is that cheating? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's been over. Well, has it happened yet? Has the vote happened? The the vote ends on the 17th. Okay. And oh. then the 22nd, which I think is next Sunday, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's uh, the SAG Awards. And we always watch those every year. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome to get all those movies sent and to watch them. Yeah. Are you SAG? No. Oh, okay. I You're both I, I actors, though. I'm not an actor, no. I made this him is, act in a this film. Is, this I made is him all, act. Yeah, this is... Uh, I, he, yeah. He's going to have an IMDb cred soon. <laughs> I made him act you in a You should take one of my beginner classes. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. <laughs> They're fun. You should, McClay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Hey. Yeah. I think I have a voucher, I, but yeah. I don't have one. Um, you would be a great actor. You yeah. have that. You have such a good look. Thank you. you. And, you and you're an actor, right? Yeah. I tell him that all the time. 
That's why I, I made yeah, sure you. But you need some really good training. Yes. 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 So I'll go to the Howie Acting School. Yes. Uh-huh. And yeah, and and it, it's not it's not hard. Although, um, I if I see something, I point it out and I fix yeah, it. Yeah, I would hope so. I don't want you to go past one yeah. acting problem. So that's what I do because I just that's just my thing. You don't go past an acting problem. Yeah. I, I, I was going crazy thinking of that guy's name, so I had to look it up. Spencer Tracy. Oh, my God. Can you I believe I feel so I, stupid. I know. Saying, I yeah. do, too. I feel I feel more stupid because <laughs> I've been in this business longer than you. But, you know, <laughs> but he I'm also older, and I names don't come to me mm-hmm. as quick as they used to. Yeah. Names he, he don't. He knows a lot about the old school, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, geek out out, I, I geek out over that stuff. Uh, it's become like... Um, like uh, a th- something that I'll throw on at the house if I just need to like relax. You know what I mean? It's that's kind of like what it's become. Yeah, for he always me. has a black and white movie on yeah. in the background. Ah, yeah. it's weird. It's crazy. I've, I think I've seen every black and white movie. We love TMC, so we watch a lot of that. That's yeah. that old movie. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's my favorite channel. Yeah. <laughs> I was really, I was really bummed <laughs> out. No joke. I was really bummed out when Robert Osborne died because he was the host of that channel from the yeah. beginning. And he passed yeah. away like the last year. That's so. a, yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Bill, my husband, wears hearing aids and has for years, and everybody knows it. Mm-hmm. It's not a secret. And for some reason, that channel, he can hear them so well. Wow. Uh, it's so hard to hear some of the newer actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, what'd they say? <laughs> yeah. I have to watch with, with subtitles on oh, a yeah. lot of movies. <laughs> Um, uh, mostly for me, the like piggy blinders. And well, I had to watch. I just watched. I'm been geeking out on that that movie King. I think it's called. Oh King. yeah. Uh, and I had I watched it a couple more times. It was and, all uh, right. You didn't like it? it was all right. I liked it, man. I love that movie, dude. That I movie don't even great. know King. What's that one? It's on Netflix. It's um. It's basically the the retelling of Henry V. Oh, okay. And it's um, Timothy. Sh- was it Shamal? Shamale? Yeah. yeah. Young oh, really? Kid. Robert yeah. Pattinson's like in it. Ro- it. Yeah, good, Robert good Pattinson's actor. in it. And it's an um, Australian dude's name. Edgerton. Oh. Edgerton. Ed- Edgerton. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's yeah. Really Australian. Good in, yeah, he's Australian really good. In yeah, it. I will definitely watch that. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, a it's lot. Really well, if good. he doesn't have black and white movie in the background, he has some uh, British BBC documentary yeah. on. Yeah. You know, it was good. It was really good. I, I, I'm really happy that they're throwing stuff like that on Netflix. I mean, it's a bummer that that the that the theater has lost so much of its luster, but. At least they're they're putting well, good stuff out on the streaming services. There's um, you know, pros and cons of both of that because now because of Netflix, um, directors are getting to make films that you know no other production company would give exactly. them the day to make. You know exactly. I mean? Like the Coen Brothers, yeah. Scorsese, those movies wouldn't have you know yeah. been made. Well, I, this is funny because you see you saw basically all everybody talking about so many things from Netflix at the Golden Globes. What did you guys see? The all the the did you guys watch the Golden Globes? I just when I woke up the next morning because I don't honestly give a shit about the award shows. Like, but um, I'll, like to so sign on YouTube and do Ricky Gervais's open monologue it, it on was, it, and I watched it three times. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah, I did. I could <laughs> not believe it. I was like, <laughs> dude, wow. Yeah, that's a fucking stand-up comedian. Yes, because that's yes. when you know the audience is gonna hate it, but the yes. whole world's gonna like yes, it. Yes, that and guy killed it. He yeah. killed it. I, I, well, he kept saying, you know, this is my end. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Five years of this. But you know what? I've come to love uh, Ricky Gervais in the last couple of years. Like, I've have you seen Afterlife? Yeah. That's, have you seen Afterlife? On, no. He has a show called Afterlife on Netflix. It sounds so depressing. Oh, it is. It actually really is depressing. It's about um, his uh, wife dying of cancer, and he wants to kill himself. But it's really funny. <laughs> I'm serious. That's yeah, hilarious. I know, I know, yeah. like, I'll check that out. It's amazing. Yeah. And then um, he's like a really his, good all actor. his stand-ups are awesome. Yeah. That show Extras is awesome. The yeah. Office is awesome. Well, I just I was really surprised how hard he went right off the bat. It was cool. Did you see? And they showed Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks was not having it. No, he you know was who was not laughing? Having it. He wasn't. Um, Ray Romano. Oh, he's yeah. a stand-up. Yeah, because he's a stand-up. stand-up. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like. a stand-up. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's talk about that. You've you've taught stand-ups before. A lot of oh, stand-ups. Oh, yeah. A lot of stand-ups. Do you know who that is? 
Oh, something. You probably can't see it, I can only see a big old light. Uh, well, um, I was tripping out because I was reading your testimonials on your website, and I have a post there that says Ari Shafir. Oh, Ari, yeah. Who <laughs> he was a student? Yes, he was for like three I have, years. I, 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 we I'm love obsessed Ari with Shafir. him as a stand up comedian. Love I love Shafir. his podcast. Yes. That's awesome. Well, he said, okay, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to be on HBO. And I said, okay, I'll watch it. And he goes, yeah, do. Because um, I'm going to drop trow on it, <laughs> pick up my, pick up the uh, the stool, put it on my head and walk out with my jeans around my, my ankles. And then I go, you can watch that. I said, yeah, I'll watch that. So <laughs> he was so funny. So he said, um, so I watched his HBO special and he did his whole thing. It was really funny. It was good, you know. Yeah. And um, so at the very end of it, he is he dropped his jeans. He had nothing on from the waist down, and but they blurred it. And so he <laughs> texted me, and he goes, "Damn, you didn't get to see my junk." <laughs> 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 I mean, that's weird hbo they, yeah it was they hbo always show swans yeah. on there. no they didn't they blurred it wow yeah 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 he's a. Uh, I, i'm obsessed with his podcast and his uh stand-up and he's just you know a what unique he's a good guy and he's he is a good, good actor guy. He, you know? and he's a sweet guy i've known him for years and he and he's really good and all of his friends too yeah you know uh, all those actors uh, those comedians i wish i yeah, wrote them all down. Yeah. But a lot of them. Um, Steve Simone and oh, Rana wow. Zizzi. Joe Diaz. Just so many of them, like 20 of them, went through our school. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, I know Steve Rana Zizzi yeah. and Steve Simone. Yeah. Because they're always on Joey Diaz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, for, uh, yeah, no, they were all in our class for years and years. So what's yeah. it like? Um, is it easier to teach a comedian than it is a person that just comes, that doesn't have a comedic background? No, it's harder. harder. And I'll tell you why, because they keep wanting to be funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. And we say, okay, you're, you're learning, when you're learning how to be an actor, I'm going to be giving you funny scenes, and I'm going to be giving you dramatic scenes, but you have to do them realistically. And so when I'd give them, like, comedy scenes, they would do them like a stand-up comedian. And then we'd have to stop it, and we'd have to say, mm -mm, that's not acting, that's being a stand-up comedian. Yeah. So you need to say these lines believably. And what's funny about them is just like in a sitcom, it's a situation that's funny. not And, and of course, how you say it. But it's, see, in comedy... It's there's zingers and how you say it and then it's and it's funny that way because dun dun nah, nah, you know but yeah, not like beats. yeah but not not in acting yeah. not in a story you're telling the story and then it has it's written funny so they had to learn that they had They're to basically they had to break how themselves. to not be funny yeah like break themselves stop being yeah. funny yeah. yeah trying to because that's not funny to them uh huh so yeah. So, um, yeah, we had a, oh, God, I can't remember his name, but he's really good friends with Ari Shafir, and <laughs> he's an insult comic. And he'd always show up to class because he always worked at the comedy store. Mm -hmm. oh, at, uh, Dave, David. Dave, um. David. Not Tyler. Not. David Taylor. Oh. David Taylor. David yep, Taylor. Dave Taylor, yeah. And he would always show up to class with his lips split. <laughs> And I go, not again. He goes, yes, I got hit in the mouth by another boyfriend <laughs> because I made fun of his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But you know what? He was really nice to me. He made everybody else cry in the class. But, and he told me, because you're the only one I can't make cry. <laughs> so I don't you know, know what that's about. Act. Yeah. yeah. I really, yeah. really appreciate uh, stand-up comedy. I just, that art form, it's just, I, yeah. I think it's like takes a rare breed of uh, person to, because cause it's one of those art forms where you have to practice on stage in front of the crowd. So oh. they're writing their material, you know, so you yeah, have to you like do. kind of eat shit for a long time to make your art better, you know, yeah. and that takes a lot of balls to do that, I think. Yeah, we had stand-up comedians that wanted to be, and what they do is they go to the comedy store, what they have, they have a lot of different stages. I they know the comedy store, I've been there, I love that oh, place. Oh, okay, I'm yeah. I love that place. Yeah, yeah, so he would go in, and they had, on Monday nights, you could go in and practice for like 45 minutes, and just get the feel, and. It's like the belly room or something? Uh, it they was like the main stage. The main, room, yeah, the, uh, like yeah, and then, so new comic, they would let new comics, come in and try out their stuff and see if they got laughs or not 
So. That's uh, that's really hard to push yeah. yourself up there for the first time. Yeah. Go up there and do an open it, mic for the first time. It is, but then th- if you can it. do that, if you can do that day in, day. day out, night in, night out, then acting isn't that hard, mm-hmm. you know, at least to get up there. Then the hard part is just learning the craft. Yeah. You kind of have to beat two different animals. Do you have to de- beat, be able to beat that animal to go up there and just let yourself out up there and not care? And then you also have to learn it yeah. but then also like like i hear tom Segura like talk about just the craziest bombs that he's ever had you know what i mean and then you're booked for a, like a thursday friday saturday you're bombing on like a thursday and then you have another show you know what i mean yeah. and you just keep bombing and yeah then you have to face the owner and like hey can i have my pay now and stuff like i don't know that would suck <laughs> yeah well one of my favorite comedians that we knew really really well really close with Sam Kennison. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay, you know him. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Anybody, some of the young people, I'd say, you know, we were really good friends with Sam Kennison and his wife Malika. And they go, hmm, don't know him. Who's that? Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, you're just way too young. <laughs> yeah, Sam <laughs> but Sam I mean, Kennison. like a legend. Yes, yes. We took him sailing with us. And wow. Yeah. And he, he was just a wonderful person we went to so many of his shows in las vegas he had shows that started at 1 30 a.m wow and they would be sold out standing room only and they're those big theaters like a thousand people and he'd do our show and then we would stay up until all of us would like go out drinking and literally stay up until dawn um, wow party yeah it was really fun and Mal- Malika, his wife, yeah. So, well, as a matter of fact, they had just, they had been together forever. And she was wonderful and beautiful and everything. Well, um, she, uh, anyway, she was really fun to go party with in Las Vegas. <laughs> but, but now he, you know, he got killed by a drunk driver, yeah. an 18 yeah. year old guy. Yeah. yeah. And they had called me and Bill that morning. And I have it on a tape because it was tapes back then. Wow. Yeah. I have them saying, okay, you guys, uh, we just got back from Hawaii. We just got married. And I'm on my way to Laughlin. And um, uh, we are going to, I'm doing a gig there. And as soon as we go back, we are going to celebrate. And then he got killed on the way to Laughlin. And his brother, Bill, who I'm still really close friends, was Uh, behind us. I I was going to say, Bill wrote an amazing book about his brother yes yeah. Yeah, that book is yeah. like uh, all yeah. the comedians talk about it mm-hmm. and I, I gotta read that i yeah. have two copies <laughs> yeah <laughs> one signed by somebody a rather than the other one signed by by bill yeah. but yeah no we're 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 still really good friends oh, uh, man, his wife but sam was uh, yeah that was really heartbreaking especially since we it was just it was just hard to hear that. Yeah. But he was fun. Gosh, when we'd go out to dinner and stuff, it was just one joke after another. And <laughs> yeah, he was fun. They, he was fun. And you know what? He goes, I like you. And he told me, he says, I like you and Bill because you're my drug-free friends. <laughs> <laughs> he had some balance in his yeah, life. Yeah, he needed <laughs> some balance. Yeah, he has everybody else. We part, we, but Bill and I don't do drugs. So we, yeah, yeah you can't teach this long. No, and, no. No. True. You, yeah, well, I would not have, teach that long and have that a drug habit that long because that ain't going to last either. Well, I'm sure you've no. seen a lot of it with all, maybe even within the students mm-hmm. or just being mm-hmm. in the scene LA, in the game in yeah. L.A. Just, oh, uh, we've know, seen I mean, it all, yeah, well, with all of them. Heartbreaking, yeah. 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 Well, I just, uh, one person right there, I mean, it wasn't because of drugs, but... I, I mean, was the eighteen-year-old drunk? He was drunk, so I mean, that's that's uh, that's uh, was amazing, yeah. yeah. You know, amazing light uh, put out by you know drugs and stuff. So you see a lot yeah. of the damage it does too to these well, amazing talents. He was talents. not wearing his seatbelt, so he hit the steering wheel, and and it just crushed him here. And Malika didn't wear her seatbelt either, but she had just finished a bottle of champagne, so she just rolled into the front of the. car. Yeah, she didn't. But take she did any. hurt her back. Wow. Yeah, but that was a long time ago, like nineteen. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, mid eighties, right? Late eighties. Yeah. Uh, no, ninety two, I think. Oh, okay. really? Wow. Was that it? You know, I can't remember. Wow. It might might have been. No, that's 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 about right. Yeah. So bad. Ninety two, ninety two or ninety three, yeah. something or other. Anyway, he was uh, really a, a, a wonderful guy. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, but when we took him sailing on our boat, <laughs> it was like in the middle of the night because they had just, just finished Sam his Kinison TV. sailing yeah. on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was just the four of us too, and so it was about three in the morning. It was pitch black, and the next thing I know, he goes into his uh, a, a, a basket and he pulls out a. 350 Magnum, <laughs> and he starts shooting it. Oh, and God. Bill and I are, wait a minute, there's other, we're on the way to Catalina. Uh, Sam, you can't shoot a gun. There are sailboats. It's pitch black, so you couldn't see a thing. And yeah, he was just, he goes, yeah. I'm just, I go, no, that thing goes really far. So we go, no, 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 you cannot do that. You could hit a sailor. <laughs> yeah, that's no it. Oh man, it's anyway. That was funny. Yeah, um, I've uh, I've read so many other stories that it sounds <laughs> like something that he would do for yeah. sure. <laughs> well, he could just you give him a topic and yeah. he could talk for hours on it. It was crazy. Yeah. One of my favorite all-time uh, movie scenes is his scene in um, uh, that movie with Rodney Dangerfield, where there it's I think it's back to school. Is that back yeah. back to class where he plays the the Vietnam war veteran teacher oh, yeah, yeah. that remember. is so good yeah. my daughter-in-law was in that she was the pretty girl with the long um, brown hair oh wow. was, i'm gonna have to go yeah. watch that yeah. again <laughs> <laughs> that's steve's wife yeah sarah shahi yeah wow that's cool yeah. so you said that uh he was three when you moved over there what was it like um raising a son in la during in the 90s right you know what he oh, yeah, was wonderful he was sweet He's always been kind of a sweet, loving guy. Lots of hugs and kisses. Fun to be with. Just, you know, a real boy. Never got hurt. When he fell, he wouldn't get hurt. He just, <laughs> yeah, he was just, just, yeah, he was He was always a great guy. And and um, always been a really nice son. He, he's been um, checking on his dad because, like I said, yep. he, you know, and he's been checking like every two days. How's dad doing? You know, he's just, yeah. How is he doing now? Well, he's getting over it. Well, not only did he um, get the shingles, but he got that, that complication you can sometimes get where the shingles goes away, but there's nerves That's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I had shingles when I was 13, and I had that same problem. Yeah. Yeah. You did, You had that post herpetic neuralgia? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. How it long did that last for you? But you About were young. a year. It actually, to, to be I honest. I Bill's not listening yeah. to this. <laughs> no, I'll edit this part out. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> that... Uh, that I feel like that started my migraines. Um, I, I started getting because um, I had it down the back of my this nerve here on your back yes. of your head. Oh man! And oh. Uh, yeah, you were thirteen. Yeah, when I was thirteen. Oh, that's Jesus. to be honest. I think that's where I I started my um, my drug habit with the pills. Oh damn! Yeah, that yeah. was the first time that I remember taking pills and being like, wow. Yep. This just feels know. awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yep. um, but yeah, so that that. Uh, that was, yeah, a, and they, so it, it can know. come back too. It can come back. Oh, don't say that. Out yeah, loud. I hate to say it, but yeah. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's a nightmare. So you get it every now and then. Well, I haven't gotten it since, thank God. But I've heard of people getting it more than once. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. Well, he's dealing with that right now. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Oof. Well, and well. because of it. I've been teaching since October by myself, <laughs> all five classes. Well, we appreciate you, you taking your time to come here. Yeah, I know. Sure. That's a Thank lot you. of work. I know. I know. So anybody want to come in now, you're going to be getting me as the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I forgot to ask earlier, um, if people do want to sign up, what's the easiest and fastest way to sign up for your classes? You know what? They they can find it on Google. Yelp. Just the website? They, all they have to do is go to howieactingstudio.com, okay. and the website pops up, and then they can look at it, and then they can see, you know, what uh, what's up. And yeah, if it's for them. call me. I have the, the phone number that you called. It's the 480. And then I know when it rings, it's somebody who's interested in acting. And then I have my cell phone for everybody in the friends and all students. Once Excellent. they once they join class, they get that. That's cool. Yeah. Very so I cool. can keep them separate. But um, <laughs> do you um, have any um, like newer classes that you, you're, you're deciding on adding? Or is it just is this the format that you guys are going to keep for a while? Because uh, I know you keep, well, like you keep adding classes and adding classes. But. It's, yes, that's it. Five five classes is yeah. enough. Because I need a Friday just, yes. to, just to do all my finances. Yeah. 
I have to like, you know, do all, all the, the all bullshit behind the scenes. Yes, know. I have to do all that. And then I also do all the scenes for the scene study classes and I have to prepare like a syllabus. A <laughs> yeah. syllabus for the beginner classes. I have to have they have to have stuff to do. Yeah. And it's I always want it very challenging. So so they're really everybody's challenged yeah. in all the classes always they i like them to get better nothing's ever boring or old it's just always you know and then bill and i are just we just want them to be the best they can and um get rid of all their acting problems and yeah. they're pretty good actors left over yeah, yeah? Well, that's real do believable you, and effective yeah do you guys do just private only we don't do private at all it's classes oh, i thought we, you said you did private we on did sa- private oh, you did. Okay. on saturdays and it just and the, and then it was like three out it was like three hours a day and then people kept calling can and because there's no way in the in the day because i'm doing scenes for yeah. everybody i'm emailing i'm making calls and well uh, if someone has like a, a big scene for a big project don't you guys work with them for sometimes if it's like for a big movie or a big show they could come to us yeah i've heard a couple of, I, thought, um, I thought i had some they ask meetings. questions yeah. um mm-hmm. yeah cool. and then i a lot of uh, actors that are in things they hire from our class you know i think yeah. many of our actors are getting a lot of the work here yeah so we've had a lot of people mention you a bunch of uh, acting People yeah. who are actors in the valley mention you, and they like to bring it to class and say, "Oh, I have a huge monologue for this movie I'm doing. Um, can I do it in class?" And you like look it over and give me any hints or help me with mm. it, and we do that. We'll do that for them. That's yeah, cool. that's cool. That's and then the people cool. in class like to see it too. Yeah, yeah. So we'll help like that. We don't help it. And sometimes they'll say, "I've got a huge commercial audition. Can you? Can can I just?" come a little bit early to class and I run it by you and you give us some pointers. So yeah, stuff like that. Very cool. Then we do that. How do you feel about um, social media and how big of a part that plays in everything right now? Because if you've been doing it since the eighties, you said no cell phones and no cell phones, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it seems like um, a mm-hmm. lot of the acting friends that I have, they're constantly, you know, going through social media to get a lot of their, their um, stuff. It, is social media a big part of your your guys' practice? The only I thing I have on social media is an Instagram, Howie Acting Studio Instagram. And I just recently put something on for the first time in like two or three months. And then a Facebook page, Howie Acting Studio Facebook page. I used to put like an acting article or a part of an acting article, but I've been so busy yeah. <laughs> teaching yeah. the classes yeah. that I, I, I've I only been getting to something maybe once a month. So I haven't been doing that. So really it's they, they'll just Google or go into Yelp, like acting classes yeah. and then ours comes up and then they you know and i tell everybody don't just check us out check everybody out because you know you know we're we're um well you know just i think some of them are maybe more fun than we are we're kind of business we like and we you you said you have a whole point your point is to get them roles right so you're yeah. there, when you have a when you have a goal like that you have to do certain things to get that goal done it's not all fun and games we want all our actors to be the one that gets every part when they go on aud- on the audition and they're up against maybe a hundred other people yeah and so they have to be the most believable the most effective the most um professional and they have to and so we teach them how to walk in the door how to have that confidence going i have plenty of actors that come back and they go i just i just got a a part because when i walked in i looked around the room and i went boy am i so getting this one because they just know that everybody was like uh, i'm so they were they were just acting nervous and our actors don't they have confidence when they walk in yeah, casting they have directors certainty. can see that. Yes, from a they mile see away. that. Mm-hmm. They see desperation, and they see confidence. When I first started auditioning, I would 
fucking sweat through my whole body and I just couldn't imagine what they thought like who the hell is this guy because I would be so nervous and there, I, at the time I didn't really I didn't know how to like mask it or hide it or overcome it yeah. actually what overcame it was just me going on a bunch of auditions and you know Absolutely. over and over and over and over and over and, and over like I would go to, like force yeah. myself yeah. to to just go on ones even if I didn't even want the part just to more so practice auditioning you know and that's another way to do it but bill and i have techniques yeah i need i need to learn those <laughs> that we teach our actors that i don't think anybody else has because we've just developed them over these last 40 years of working with actors of all kinds of caliber you know because we've worked with uh, tom Selleck, nancy cartwright bart simpson <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, priscilla <laughs> presley and I have stories about every one of them. Um, uh, Patrick Swayze. You had an interesting story, I think. I can't know if you messaged it to me or someone else told me about Danny DeVito and his audition process. Oh, yeah. That was well, interesting. Da yeah, Danny DeVito, how he got taxi. He walked in, they went, mm, you're just not what we're looking for. We need, we're, we're looking for a boss. I don't know if you ever saw Taxi. It was yeah, all for sure. We used to watch it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and he, they go, just, we're just, just tell by the looking of you, you're not really what we want. We, wanna, we wanted a tough bus, boss guy. You have to run this whole taxi thing and these guys, and they're going to, and he goes, oh, you don't think I can do it? And he jumped up on the table and he kicked everything off of it. He goes, there, how's that? And they wow. went, oh, okay. And they gave him the job. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Damn, sometimes you just got to do that. Yeah. I wonder how many people stuff. that backfires on, though, and like <laughs> they jump up on the table, and the dude's like, yeah. call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you like know. when it, um, uh, Elijah, when he's like, oh, yeah. doing, doing Krampus. Yeah. 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 Well, I know Tom Selleck really well. And uh, and he was in class. He had never done anything ever. Wow. He'd done some commercials because he was really good looking back in the 80s. And then he goes, Carla, can I make an announcement in class? And I go, sure you can. He says, okay, you guys, you know how I've been going on auditions and auditions and everything. And, and we we're all like, yeah, and I don't get anything. He goes, I finally got something. And he goes, I'm the lead, and it's a show, and it's called Magnum P.I. Wow. And I'm going to be, they're sending me to Hawaii. And so everybody clapped. That was his really that first happy. thing? Very first thing wow. ever. I know, but didn't um, he get offered Raiders of the Lost Ark at the same time, and he turned down that for Magnum P.I.? That's well, yeah, but he was on Magnum P.I. like five, six oh, years ago. Oh, he was so. already on Magnum yeah, P.I. and then is, got offered This that. is when he, he auditioned for it and got it, and he was just so proud of himself, so we all applauded. That's amazing. And then. I used to he, watch that show yeah. every night too. That helicopter. Well, yeah. He called me from Hawaii. He said, Carla, he and I, I said, Hi, where are you? And he goes, I'm in my house. He goes, They they put me in this amazing house. I said, Don't tell me. It's high on a cliff overlooking the ocean. He goes, Yes. How'd you know? And I go, Of course that's they're gonna give you the yeah. best you're the lead of a new T V series. So he was he's That was a, cool a big guy. show too. That was a big show. Yeah. yeah. That was a, for a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah, but Patrick Swayze was in class, too. Oh, wow. And uh, we knew him before he got anything, anything. Wow. Back, Yeah, I knew him since 1980 when he and his wife, Lisa, and he had not done one thing at this point. And then he started auditioning and getting stuff. So, um, yeah. Is it kind of that buildup you see, like, you know, they kind of get a commercial and then maybe like a line in a show and then, is no. it, or is it just like, it's just luck out of nowhere. Yeah. It's just luck. We had so Cause many. Cause at that time they probably have all kinds of stuff on their resume, huh? Uh, so it is luck. No. Um, um, Tom didn't have anything on his resume but commercials. He had done nothing. Um, uh, Patrick, which we called Buddy, <laughs> Buddy Swayze, since you know he was all, all his friends called him Buddy. Um, no, he had nothing on his resume. Wow! And then he started getting stuff. Yeah, just dumb people stuff. just have it, and then when they audition, yeah. they have it, and yeah. And he would do scenes in class, and one time he did a scene, a, a fight scene, and he threw he pretended to be hit and he threw himself up against a, the wall and somebody had left a nail in it and it went oh. right in his back Ooh. so yeah it, who is this patrick, patrick swayze, swayze. yeah i yeah. remember uh, he's all in so those, many of my favorite movies yeah he was in a lot of really good movies remember uh wasn't he in red dawn yeah. Yes, yeah. but that was way later. <laughs> was it? I said I've known him since 1980. Wow. We took him sailing on our sailboat, him wow. and Lisa. 
Yeah. Back always in the beginning. Same people like Nancy Cartwright. She's been Bart Simpson all these years. Yeah. yeah. I remember she yeah. was in a movie I, used, I watched when I was young before she was in anything. She yeah, played. Yeah. She was an actual actress. She was an actual uh, actress. That's yeah. why she was in acting classes. Yeah, yeah. But she. Um, Do you get a lot of voice actors? Oh, we've had a lot of voice actors, yeah. Well, you you want to know a story you've never heard because I'm the only one she told? <laughs> sure. Okay. Of course. Um, <laughs> I, I said, so um, Bill and I, uh, we directed and produced a play, and uh, it was in uh, Beverly Hills. And uh, she came to it because we're friends. And I said, so I heard you got this amazing TV series. You're going to be playing, you know, this cartoon character, Bart. Amazing. It was just very in the beginning. I said, so I know you were, you loved voiceovers, but how did you get that part? That's pretty good. And she said, well, what I did, I came in to the audition for the other, the little girl, Lucy. Lisa. Uh, Matt, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. And so, um, and I, so they told me to wait in the waiting room. Well, in this waiting room, there was about 25, 12-year-old boys. And there was a video playing up on the screen of uh, a character that was also going to be in this, uh, this cartoon animated series. And I was just watching this, this boy on there. And I was watching all the boys watch it. And I was like, Huh, interesting. Well, I went into, she said, well, I went into my audition for uh, Lisa, and they said, you know, thank you very much. That was great. We love, we love your voice. That was really good. And she goes, you know what? While I'm here, um, I was in the next room, and they were showing um, the boy. And they go, she said, yes, that's Bart Simpson, and uh, we're going to be hiring one of those little 12-year-old boys. And she said, well, you know, I was watching him, and I think I have a good voice for him. And they go, oh, no, we, we want a real little boy. We want a real 12, 11, 12, 13-year-old boy. And she says, well, let me just do you my voice because I, I think it's going to be good. I, I just let me do it. So she did this whole thing. She goes, I just did this whole thing with the Bart Simpson voice. Mm -hmm. And they went, oh, my God, that is amazing. And they hire her right then and there wow. for Bart Simpson. And they were like, and she said, look, I never grow old. Yes. I'm not going to, you won't have to keep getting a 12 oh, year old. Yeah. I can do this voice forever. Yeah. And what is it? 16 years. Yeah. How did That's they crazy. not think of that? They, huh? they, they, how did they not think of that? They must not have thought mm -hmm. the show was going to go that long if they were going to hire a 12 year old because mm -hmm. their voice is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's turned into quite a career. Yeah. No, sure. Longest yeah. running like, show on yeah. TV, right? Yeah, oh, so, and yeah. I have another one with Priscilla Presley. Oh, I was yeah. I used to crush on her big time when I, well, from Nicky Gun. Yeah, but no, not with her mom. Oh, no, that was no. I'm thinking of Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie. Oh, I used, yes. Pr Priscilla is the one that was married She's to Elvis. To Elvis Presley. Yeah, she yeah. was in Nicky well, Gun. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> not when I knew her. She uh -huh. had done nothing. Okay, so Priscilla came to him and she goes. I'm not getting any auditions, none. I get nothing. I've done nothing. And I go, why do you think? And she says, it's because everybody thinks I'm a sweet girl. She was young. This is 80s. Yeah. And she said, and I said, well, and she goes, you know what? I'm going to change. I'm going to change things up. So in class, without telling me or anybody, she did a strip tease. She did a monologue, and bit by bit, bit she took off all her clothes except for a G-string, walked across the stage, and went, scene. And she <laughs> <laughs> absolutely nothing but a G-string, nothing. And she and we were all like, whoa. Well, guess what? Uh, the next audition, she got it. It changed something in her mind. And she went in with some attitude. She went in with some sexiness. Hmm. She went in with a, because she always had this kind of, people looked at her like, you know. Yeah. She was younger then, absolutely gorgeously beautiful and sweet as anything. Really, really sweet. 
And they're like, oh, we can't put you in anything. You just, yeah. no one would believe it. Well, she just turned on the sex appeal. Yeah. And she did it in class <laughs> in front of all of us. <laughs> yeah, you got to see it, it for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. It, it did. Sometimes you just have to. So I tell people when they th- I'm really nervous. I go, do a strip tease. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell that to the guys, too. <laughs> uh, and we had a few guys that. I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Yeah. What was it like um, in Denver? Was there is there a scene out there? A uh, pretty good. No. Uh, don't know. No. 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 And my mom, you know, was just there. We did it, but they had no other acting. Te- they had some acting teachers, but they didn't come from L.A. And all the people we knew, because all of that, because that was, you know, because we moved there in 1994. So we had already been teaching for a long time in Los Angeles, the L.A. way, or at least this, the way we were taught. You know, which is, you know, very, yeah, just being real. Yeah, emotional. Um, yeah, we just don't do, yeah, emotional. Yeah. But real emotions. Yes. Like emotions from inside. What, what happens when certain actors take that too far, though? So there's some actors that go too far in that, like, um, where they have to, in order to actually, f- to, to, to portray it, they have to feel it. You know that uh, what do they call that? Method. The method acting, where these these kids. You just, mean they like living on set? Yeah, like they're on. living like that. Well, no, you don't have to go that far. Yeah, because some of these guys I go too that, far. I think some of that is just like promotion for the movie. They're like, okay. this guy went method. Jared Leto sending rats to people on yeah. the set. Uh, I don't think in between takes when the director's like, "Hey, do this," and he's like, oh, "Okay, I'm the Joker. I'm gonna," you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think like. I think the method thing well, is kind there's of some bo- stories of I, I some guys just getting ridiculous. I think there's like Daniel Day Lewis. He's like a legit method actor. Yes. People have really done it. But I think for some reason, I just think it's blown out of proportion now. A lot of people claim method. I'm method. I'm method. But I don't really think they know what method is. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Well, Daniel Day Lewis, you know, he lived in those clothes. That's what I'm saying. Like he's legit. For yeah. that one. Th- um, you know, it's. You, he's crazy, they're they're missing. <laughs> he is crazy. They are missing the technique to get them there in the moment, and that's one of the things we teach: how to get there, how to get visceral, how to get visceral meaning of the gut, and it's a it's a technique, and we teach it. And it's hard to do that um, consistently when you're on a set doing it take for take over and over in the wee hours of the morning, you know what I mean? To, to find mm-hmm. those places over and over, you know, you know, it is because we had a student and she got a really good role on a TV series and she said, okay, they said, okay. And she goes, she t- had told me I had to cry at 8 a.m. in the morning. She goes, so like up uh, 15 minutes before I did my technique and I got there and I was sobbing so that when they call me, I'd go out and I, I, I'd have the, uh, the tears running in my eyes, the real, the real, you know, emotion going on. And then just before I was to get on set, they said, oh, sorry, we, we got delayed and it's going to be another like hour. So around 9 a.m. Well, she said 9 a.m. came, 10 a.m. came. She goes, I did not get to get on set until 10 p.m. and by then I was dry as a bone and they had to put wintergreen in my eyes which is a drop you know what that is right yeah, yeah. They, they just drop it and then your eyes are pouring tears yeah. and then she had to go you know but she had to get the emotion and then but she had the because she was supposed to be sobbing but uh yeah she goes I kept getting ready and getting ready and they kept saying sorry something this happened or this happened and so it's not in and it's not that she's a bad uh, actor or anything. It's no, just she's amazing. That, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like that, those things just happen. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not like she can be like, "Hey guys, I was at that place earlier." You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like it just, you know, those th- that's like standard yeah. procedure on set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just waiting around and yeah. thinking you're ready for your time, and then like yeah. six hours later or well, ten hours later. Well, Steve says, you know, he's been on Shameless ten years now, and Showtime. Pi- I'm not supposed to say this, maybe. Anyway, Showtime picked it up for an eleventh season. No Ooh. way! Are you mm-hmm. serious? Nice. Yeah, he Wait didn't say. Don't I tell. It, I thought. I thought it ended at ten. Well, um, t- t- ten is running. Yeah, because um, my girlfriend um, watched, like just finished it. I thought, yeah. Well, on episode ten. And well, does she watch it on Netflix? Netflix. Yeah. Okay, so they just finished. They just finished watching nine because 10 is currently 
on is currently airing well, on, on Showtime. Show but they did let the production company know um, that it was picked up for an 11th season, which is really good. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. But Steve said he, um, they tape all the rehearsals because everybody is so good, and they've been working together for 10 years now, that they read their lines, they memorize them, they do, you know, the table reads, they get it down pat. So when they usually they – the the rehearsal is since the, it's all taped they just say that's it that's a go wow and he says very seldom do they have to do another take wow yeah let's uh let's talk to the that's listeners a, that's very interesting that with the camera movements on that show like i always wonder how they do their marks on that show because because it's there's so much movement in the dialogue just in the house and yeah and i'm just like how the hell do they the camera guys know they're going everyone knows it goes it sounds it seems like they just do whatever and they just figure it out but i know there's more to it than that it's just well it's so they do. <laughs> i'm sure I i'm have, sure for time they do i have watched many shows with steve and he goes oh see that line i just ad-libbed it right then and there Oh, and wow. he goes, oh, did you, did you hear what Shinola said? Shinola plays his wife, um, Veronica, on the show. I told her, say this line, and she did. And he, and they went, oh, yeah, keep it in. That's great. So, And then he'll say, he'll say, oh, see that move there? I just did that, like, on the spur of the moment. And then they just keep it in. They kind of like, ad lib and put stuff in. At least Steve does, he says. Let's uh, tell the listeners about Steve. Uh, I don't think we've really mentioned it. Your son, Steve. Howie. Is, is on a Showtime series called Shameless for 10 years now. And before that, six years as a van on Reba. My girlfriend's obsessed with that show, too. It's funny. It's <laughs> funny. I grew, so, up, I grew up, my mom was a Reba McIntyre fan. Yeah. Growing up, she's by all Very gracious yeah. lady, for real. Yeah. She's for real. Yeah. She's none of that fake stuff for Reba. Yeah. For, yeah that's cool. Real. I actually got, that's, yeah. that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so Steve loves the show and loves his uh, his all the guys on there. I mean, they they started like at ten, and now they're in their twenties. So, yeah. and they're all really great and really close friends, and um, get along obviously. And and he's lucky, you know. Not a lot of actors. A lot of actors get on shows, but they last a year yeah, or two. Yeah, to stay ten. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Or maybe five. Yeah. You know, ten years 10. a long time, and now it's going to go to eleven. Yeah. So that's so we're proud of him. Very cool. Yeah, and he thanks us. He goes, "I couldn't do it without you guys." So that was nice. That's nice. He's yeah. he's very thankful. What was the audition process for him to get that show? Was it was it pretty brutal? Uh, okay. So he said, "I he went in to the audition, and there was just all of the producers and writers, and they were all watching, and so he just was standing up." in front of them all and they said okay uh this is your line he's late that's the line so that's the whole line what? he's late <laughs> so steve was like okay he's late he said i did five minutes on he's late what, but it was he said what i did is i looked around and i thought he goes you're out of ba- bar they said you're out of bar and then someone comes up and said he's late or he's going to be late. He's going to be late. So, Steve, he's going to be late and I'm at a bar. Okay. So he just starts doing this whole improv- improvisation. He said, I just started getting like, what? he started me. I was like, no. He said, I never said the line until the very end. But I was like, I just walked one end of the of the room to the other wind. I was pounding my chest. I was holding my head. I was like, I was just acting like the guys, you know, like you would if he, if somebody that you were expecting was late, he decided to just, you know, like he's always Played been. Up. There's like a scale of one to 10. He likes to act at a 10. <laughs> so he just did what he thought anybody who was expecting somebody and they were going to be late would go through and at the very went he's going to be late and then they were like and they i mean everybody That's else crazy. probably walked in and went he's going to be late he's going <laughs> to be late he's going to be late <laughs> you know but no not steve he had to do five minutes before for it <laughs> that's smart it is mm-hmm. smart was it just the one audition you had to be like go over back and over and over and over um 
Well, he said he pretty they pretty much liked him after that. That's cool. You know what? It wasn't like he'd never he'd done movies. He had done he'd done two movies yeah. by then with Kate Hudson and Anne Hathaway, and he had done a lot of a lot of independent movies and stuff. He had a huge resume by then, so they kind of knew who he was, yeah, I see and that yeah, helps. Totally. If you're nobody, then you know they'll probably bring you in for other stuff. So yeah, that's a big part. They probably knew the idea of the group that they were you know casting they said oh these people are the kind of people we have in mind and yeah they they have an idea yeah and you just go in and you know what it's like i'll get it or i won't i'm gonna be me i'm gonna do my thing yeah. and so steve does his thing yeah. <laughs> and that was it so so his character kev is his thing it's it's him and that's how he acts for real too that's cool so oh that's cool he's very funny and he gets all that from Bill. <laughs> <laughs> all that from Bill. And he says, you know, all my characters I base on you and Dad. I said, Mom and Dad, you have given me so much material. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> that is cool. Yeah, whenever I don't know what to do, I just think of my mom or my dad. And I'm like, oh, I got it. I got the guy. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. When a new episode comes out, do you guys, like, as a family, you know, watch it right when it drops or? Like right when it comes out? Well, he's in L.A., so, and we're here. No, I mean when the shows come out, like a new episode of Shameless comes out as a family. Do you, do you Well, there's just like, me and Bill. Well, I mean you and Bill. Okay. <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes we don't, you know. So. Ten years of it's been a while. What I mean is yeah. you fall, you watch the show is what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the show. I think it's funny. Um, Bill, not so much. <laughs> but then you know what? I <laughs> know. <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> but um, there's a lot uh, over the many to ten years it's been on. I have I know so many more women who love the show. A than, lot of women than love guys. Show. Yeah, almost so, every woman that I know. That yeah, loves they that like show. the the girls. The women like the the females yeah. like the show. Yeah. Um, and the guys are uh, maybe yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. They like it too, but some of them like it. But a lot of women do. You know. I don't know why, but they do, and I think it's funny. I laugh out loud. I laugh, so. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, What's the shooting schedule for, like, a season? Like, is it just, like, three months, and then, like, and well, then that's it, or is it just throughout the year? They shoot it at Warner Brothers in Burbank, and they shoot all the interiors there, all the interiors. All the exteriors are in Chicago, and they oh, do them shit. all at once. So they all fly to Chicago and get put up. Wow. And they just do all the exteriors. That's crazy. That's mm -hmm. cool. And how yeah. long are they in Chicago for? Like About a week. That's it? Uh-huh. And Steve said, and believe me, um, I've never had to buy a drink or a meal yet. Because yeah. they see him and they're like, oh, I'm going to buy you a drink or, that's you know, cool. I'm going to buy you your dinner. And so that's nice. That's cool. But he always goes out with, you know, some of the other guys too that's so. cool i love the behind the scenes on like how shows are shot and created yeah, stuff. So that's really it's cool. fun that's really it's cool. a good it's a good cast and it's a good crew um because bill and i used to live in burbank across the street from warner brothers of all places literally across the wow. street and so we used to go and you know hang out there and see see him tape the shows and stuff oh that's cool you got to uh -huh. be on set and stuff and yeah watch, yeah a lot or yeah that's everybody's cool. really nice mm -hmm. and then we moved so I'm glad we moved. I love Phoenix. <laughs> I was yeah. going to ask you, how, what, what yeah. do you think of Phoenix and, and since you've been here? You know what? I knew I wanted to get out of L.A. I love L.A., and but it just, we moved there in 1980, and it would, it would there was no traffic. It was a whole different world. Mm -hmm. It's so different now. It's bumper to bumper, and it was never then. You could get anywhere really fast, like uh, like here. And so I just said, Bill, I need to just, I, we've been doing this since 1980. We're getting older. We have a bunch of grandkids. We're, you know, I need sleep. <laughs> uh, it's, it wears you out to run an acting class. There's a lot of work involved in it. There's all the scenes. There's, you know, everybody is constantly calling them. I can't come tonight. I'm sick, you know. I can't whatever. Pay. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> well, you have a scene partner, and now, you know, then you have to, like, d do something because you can't leave the, the other actor hanging, yeah. so you have to find something. Oh, for yeah. So it's constant work, believe it or not. 
So then I said, I'm worn out. I just kind of want to retire. But I, I want to retire someplace warm because I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I cannot move back there even though I have family there. It's freezing mm. cold, <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't do it again. I need someplace warm Ooh. even in the winter. So he, he, I said, look, I'm going to bed. I'm tired. When I wake up, I want a list of places that are warm, and preferably if they have a cactus, cactus. And so he said he had a list that next morning, and I was drinking my coffee, and then my eyes landed on Phoenix, and I went, Oh, they have cactus and it's hot there. And then I went, that's it. Well, have you, had you been here? You know what? I, as a matter of fact, my dad was stationed at Luke in 1963. Oh, wow. I was young, yes, but I, I remember it a little bit. But then for two years, a friend of ours was opening a new business in Phoenix in 1988. And we moved here for two years and stayed in an apartment to help him set up his business. And that's when I fell in love with it. So when I saw Phoenix, I was like, oh, it was really, I really enjoyed that back in the 80s, you know. Um, crystal clear air. Oh, there wasn't a speck of smog back in the I was 60s about to say, that's eight. changed. Man, <laughs> yeah, no. It's still it not was, as bad as L.A., though. No. Oh, gosh, no, 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 no. no. Uh, L.A.'s kind of cleaned it up. It used to, you couldn't ever see a mile. That was it. That was the limit. In the entire city or anywhere outside the city, it was a mile is what you could see. And otherwise, it was just smog from then on. But they have cleaned that part up. But anyway, I'm so happy. I, every day I was telling you, yeah. I was telling Keith here when we were walking here from my car, that every single day I go, Oh, thank you, Phoenix, for being so beautiful and so wonderful. I'm so happy I live here. And I just I just say, oh, my gosh, do I really live here? Do I really <laughs> live here in this beautiful place? It's just it's, I feel so lucky. Well, someone who's been here for I've lived here for like 35 plus years. So I need to be reminded of that. I was just about to say that to me, the desert gets like boring, boring and all like, you know, I want to see like. When I get, I see like forest, I yeah. get really excited, like green. I'm like, oh my god! So when I, when I go to California, it's like kind of the opposite, you know, because it's yeah. so different. But um, but it, it does feel I, good but it to is reassure be, But you're us. right, you are right. It is beautiful here, and yeah. Um, but what I also like about Phoenix is you could, you know, travel just an hour and almost in any which direction. Oh, it gets, it's just totally. such different terrain, you know, or yes. just going to Flagstaff or Tucson or wherever, you know. So it's pretty. And it's pretty I, weird. I was going. I like here the. They make you go fast on the freeway. In L.A., <laughs> you can't go above 30 because it's bumper to bumper, if even 30, you know. If you're lucky, you'll go 30 miles an hour. Yeah, that's a nightmare. But here, I was like going, I was trying to do the, I was trying to stay at 65, <laughs> but the cars are zooming past me so fast. They're like, eh, hurry up, old lady. Come on. <laughs> go. You're fine. Just I'm get, trying. get at 65. <laughs> but, and all my friends, they're like, man, if I could just sometime get up to 45 it feels so great and i go well here they make you go 75 <laughs> and they go it's i almost feel like i want to slow down sometimes it's they're like and then they go i hate you <laughs> yeah la traffic is just insane it wasn't though it wasn't until maybe maybe 2000s 2005 or something just yeah. an influx of just people moving there yeah. and finally just got to a peak and yeah yeah and Steve complains about all of the homeless. It's crazy. Yeah, the tent people oh, they're everywhere. It's, and it was never like that. Ever. That's that's a whole other issue that I I don't understand, like how that, that's even uh, happening. Because because I I bus to LA back and forth, and I've been down there, and I've seen like you have to drive like 10, 15 minutes out of L, out of downtown LA just to not see the tents, and I they're know. everywhere. He says, everywhere I, where I go, there's human poop on the sidewalk. That's there's right. an app for yeah. it. There's an app to find all where people have shut. Think of shit. how disgusting that is that there's an app for it. It's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to find out where everyone took a shit. <laughs> I don't know if there's one for L.A. I know there's one for San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco no, I don't know if bad. there's an app for L.A., but he goes, it's terrible. It's just everywhere. So, And he says, you can't walk your dogs anymore because there's homeless you know, shooting up. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yep. no shit. Yeah. 
That's so, scary. But, you know, when you're an actor and that's where you have your job. I also heard, though, that they're doing, like, the, the housing has gotten so bad that the actors that are now coming in to live there, um, like, are paying for these, like, little hotels that are, like, a quarter the size of this room. And it's just enough area to sleep in. That's like Brian from... Exactly. Well, what they do, because I know some of the actors from here, I don't know why they think they take an acting class from us and then they can go to L.A. and be actors there. <laughs> it's, <laughs> but they do. They feel like, I'm ready now. Yeah. And a lot of them leave. And then they get these these little places where it's just, um, uh, it's, like a, it's like a dorm room yes. in, a, in, a, in a college where the bathrooms, everybody shares a bathroom. Yeah. And the shower and the and the toilet and, and stuff. The you share that. And the kitchen and all that. They call them but, artist houses. Yes, artist yeah. houses. And I they're doing that. I stayed at one just yeah. for like a night or two and I had a gig out there. And um, there was five bedrooms. And in each bedroom, there was three bunk beds. And there was probably 25 people living, 25, 30 people living in this five bedroom house. Yeah. It was crazy. But you have to, the artist house, you have to stay working as a, or, or at least, you have to be going out for auditions, but they have to know that you're pursuing your acting yeah. career or your directing career or whatever, or maybe it's, it's some of it's music. Yeah, there was um, there was directors, there was actors. Um, one of the guys was a guitar player. He was like a studio musician. Uh, and he was he was actually like my Uber. Like I, I paid for him just to be my <laughs> my Uber really oh, quick. Oh, cool, cool. But yeah, so I was. Yeah. It, it opened up a whole new world out there, and you know, but you have to be willing to. You know, sleep in a bunk bed with a stranger on the other bunk and then share your bathroom. And mm -hmm. it was crazy. It's like college yeah. again. It is, yeah. totally. <laughs> it, it was cool. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it, but. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, younger people. A yeah, lot, younger, yeah. Most of the people that, that I know that are leaving here and going out there are younger. They're in their early 20s. And That's you can the time to do it. Do any, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I not once you're here and you have a home yep. in your 30s, 40s, 50s, just do yeah. the stuff here. And they go, "Is there work?" And I go, "Yeah, there's lots of independent is, yeah. movies here." What do you think of the scene right now here in in the valley? I I think it's, you know, I would it would be fun if we were doing a little bit more like Albuquerque and that kind of thing, New and Mexico. Tax incentives and stuff. Yeah. I know, but they won't. It's, no, we talk about that a lot on here. We so agree with you. Here we agree a hundred percent with you. We wish that they would get a little bit more um, of that money um, yeah. here in the valley. Give them a reason to be out here. Yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen. So a lot of our actors do the. They drive to L.A. for auditions. They drive to New Mexico for auditions. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, managers and, you know, they really want it. And then they just end up moving to either New Mexico or, or, or to Atlanta. L.A., S some, some Atlanta. Now, I have some people from that were in our classes in L.A. in Atlanta, and they're doing pretty good there. Yeah. Uh, I, that's why I think uh, Phoenix is a great spot for an actor, and people don't take advantage of how close we are to L.A. To me, it seems more stressful than LA and just to go auditions there just with, um, cause I've seen a lot of people go to LA and then move right back or they move there and they get lost in the job and forget about the acting. And to me, it's been less stressful to just live here and just go there when I get an audition. You know what I mean? I think that's better. And, and there's and, flex bus. <laughs> oh, did I tell you about that? Yes. Did you look it up? It's amazing. Yes, huh? amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I had never heard of it. They should uh, yeah. They should uh, sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So explain what they are. <laughs> so, um, okay, first of all, when I would go to L.A., I'd get a gig. I would take the Greyhound. It is the biggest piece of shit transportation system ever created. And I'm only going to L.A. If you want to, like, read deep dives on how bad they are, they're on Reddit. They're hilarious. But anyway... Um, it costs about $40 on a Greyhound to go from here to L.A. They claim they have free Wi-Fi. Never works. I would just think that I was going to get, like, bed bugs and things, you know what I mean, from their chairs. So I'd lice, always have a hoodie. honey, lice. Half the people are smuggling drugs. It smells like a fart. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it just sucks, right? And then this is the other thing. If you want to cancel your ticket, um, you have to write a letter to Dallas. Like, you have to write a letter. Like, you can't go online, you can't, or, you know what I mean, <laughs> or you have to go down to the station. Like, you can't just go online or there's no app, you know what I mean? And this is another thing. One time, um, 
I had an audition in LA and it was at like at 2 p.m. And my bus left at 6 a.m. And I, you know, I'm getting up 4 a.m. Getting, you know, stressful. You're going on a trip. I get to the Greyhound. They just go, oh, your bus driver didn't show up. But you can <laughs> take the next bus. I'm like, I'm going to miss my fucking audition. What the hell? And it just completely screwed me. And, that, you know, that makes you look bad for the casting agency. You know what I mean? So anyway, then I found out about this Flix bus. Oh, my God. $10. It's an app. If you want to cancel your, 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 um, your seat. ticket or your seat, you could just do it and pick the next one. You know what I mean? You don't have to go anywhere. It doesn't smell like a fart. The Wi-Fi works. So, you know, how long is it to L.A.? Probably like six, six hours? Yeah, yeah. six and a half hours. Yeah. They're probably like seven and a half hours because they do stop in yeah. like Blythe and San Bernardino. But, uh, you know, you bring your laptop. If you if you are going on audition, you go over your lines. You can send emails. You can watch a movie. You know, bring my Switch, play Zelda. So um, I, I highly suggest Flixbus, and you should be paying me for saying all that right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey. And fuck Greyhound. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Definitely Sorry. Sorry. contact them. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Flix, you're right. Yeah. 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 No, that that sounds good because, I one, I won't drive there again. Mm. And the flight is horrible. The flight is miserable. Um, Steve lives 15 minutes from the airport. And um, it took us an hour and a half oh. with a lift. Jesus. In the traffic. And I don't wow. even think they have lifts and Ubers at LAX anymore. I think you have to take a shuttle to those now. I think, yeah, well, I don't like think that. we've been there since last August. Yeah. But um, Flixbus time. takes you right where Union stations are. Yeah. And like that's right, real like nice. Right and the then street. just get a lift or Uber. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I would do is just Uber around. Yeah. Um, Still, that's a long time on an Uber to be sitting yeah, in traffic. Yeah, hor- it was horrible. Yeah. It's yep. really bad. Hopefully it doesn't get that bad here. So, yeah. anyway. um. So, good. Well, that was good to know. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to let people know about that, too. I should write some look write it up and put it on my facebook page and say yeah. hey you all you actors who want to go to la and are sick and tired of driving your own car there this is a, a another way a nice tool mm-hmm. i'm gonna yep. do that i'm gonna do that for sure and then hopefully yeah. one day they can use promo code podcast for 20 yeah. percent off yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, just yeah but um yeah. yeah is there anything you want to uh oh you know what we didn't get to talk about is really quick um uh I know you published a book called The Actor's Menu, a character preparation handbook. Yes, we so. published, we, Bill wrote it, and I I published it. I have a publishing company oh. called Compl- Compass Publishing. That was the only book I've published. Um, but he would hand me the pages, and then I would type them into the computer, and then I typed it all up. I sent it all out to... Uh, uh, a whole bunch of uh, distributors and one in Chicago said we'd like to distribute your book and so it's distributed out of uh, Chicago uh, very cool yeah and um, it's still you know you can still buy it anywhere but we sell it at the acting studio and online actorsmenu.com and uh, the ebook which is like 205 pages on the ebook and then of course the book is 205 pages but it's all about acting cool it's not like I need to check that out it's not like um another really good book is um oh shoot hang on it'll come to me in a <laughs> second there's some other good books out there but it's like ours is really how to act it's an actor preparation handbook it's literally a guide to it's not the business of at all it's how to create a character yeah. from just whole cloth and so, and we do it like a, it's kind of like, we call it the actor's menu, because when you build a character, it's like you're making a casserole. And if you, when you're making a casserole, you put in big chunks of meat, and that's your main character. And then you're definitely not going to put a cup of cayenne pepper in it. You're going to put a pinch. So don't use too much crying or don't too, use too much of one emotion because it'll push people away. So a character has bits and pieces of, you know, it's like, make, I don't know, that sounds mm-hmm. funny, but it's like yeah. everything <laughs> has to do with uh, like food. Yeah. You know? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. A lot of uh-huh. this. And uh, it comes out just right. But we have stuff in our book you can't find in anybody else's book. That's why I like it. And, um, yeah, it's recommended by so a lot of people. So where can people find that on Amazon right now? Right? Um, no, they should just come to the studio and oh, buy the studio it for buy me. It. I'm sorry. Yes, Fuck from Amazon. Amazon, I get $2 for each book. Wow. And then we Fuck sell. Amazon. Yeah. 
<laughs> sorry, 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 my language. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah not sure our house. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she's heard it before. Yeah. Heard it before. <laughs> Believe me, it comes out of my mouth all the time. <laughs> so I'm trying to st- only do it once or twice a class. <laughs> I'm cutting I'm trying down. to do it once a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it's now a normal word that everybody hears. I can't imagine one person on the I planet know. being offended. I oh know. my goodness. Maybe it's so. It's so not silly. even a ten-year-old. My mom used to tell us, me, me and my brother growing up, that it's just a word. You know, it has oh, no extra such, weight behind it. Oh, it's a fantastic word. Yeah. It has oomph, and it has. Yeah. It's such a good word. There's a I lot mean, of good bad words. There okay, are. so like you know how inside the actor's studio, one of the questions was your favorite cuss word. Do you ever watch that show? Um, do you know what I'm talking about? The yes, I know exactly. So what's yeah. your favorite cuss word? We, d- we didn't like the guy. He asked stupid things. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Bill and I don't do stupid stuff. So b- m- my favorite cuss word is definitely fuck. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, definitely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you can use it for every everything yeah. every feeling Adjective, emotion yeah. it's it's just a brilliant word yeah. um yeah we <laughs> those poor actors what they have to go through with some of those questions oh, it's yeah. awful <laughs> we just don't like that we never ask those dumb questions yeah. like that i was just playing yeah no and and a lot a lot of people like it but we don't i, I don't is, he, is that show still on anymore I don't know. I yeah, I don't so. know either. Yeah. He probably got old and <laughs> passed. He, God, He's gone. it was. Oh, he was, he was old back Will then. Will Ferrell should take yeah. over. Yes, Will Ferrell. That was, was, yeah. Yeah. that was funny when he did. He did him. They they interviewed each other. <laughs> oh God, that was so fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, do you uh, really quick? Do you publish any other books? I know you said that was the only one. No, but. we have a lot of acting articles on the website, and Bill, Bill, and I wrote them all. We have articles. We have seven articles that we wrote for Backstage.com. Oh, the, yeah, backstage, yeah, yeah. Know backstage. Though, and we have articles on that. We used to be a regular. Um, we had we have seven really brilliant, wonderful acting articles, and then Bill said, "Okay, I'd like to do one on this," and they went, "No, no, no." we want you to do it on and he goes I'm not writing something that's stupid I, I'm not going to write an article on that so they kept calling him up over and over and said would you write an article on this and he goes no I don't write that that stupid idiotic stuff it's real stuff that will help an actor be a better actor I can't do it I can't do that stuff like you do you know how you can get a part um, when you go into a casting session make sure you take a bath before you go oh my and God. don't stink I that's what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like a, people write that stuff. So we don't do any. Ours is legit, legitimately helpful yeah. information. All our acting articles are. So Very, very cool. Yeah. And yeah. I put them on stuff a lot, you know. So, yeah, it's like we just want to make actors be better, be the very best they can, go way outside their comfort zone. Because your comfort zone is like here's your comfort zone but guess where the magic happens outside of it yeah yeah of course yeah Yeah. you got to go out you cannot be an act a good actor and be comfortable you have to just try go to those uncomfortable places and try things and see i think that's a thing that you should do in life you know what I mean? You got to put yourself and try things and be uncomfortable. And yeah. that's how you just become a pe- better person in general. You yeah. know what I mean? But definitely in acting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We yep. try to get our actors to go outside and, to, uh, n- well, not go outside, outside, but outside who their comfort zone yeah. and just really try something new and different in the class and practice there and then get a fee- get the feedback and then they can try an audition because a lot of our actors in LA we'd give them some ideas that they never heard before and they would go in and do it and the casting director said whoa nobody else did that that was amazing and they're they don't say yeah my acting teacher gave it to me that idea and they do it and they're like wow that was you we're giving you the part wow yep they got a lot of parts by you know trying things that nobody else could have come up with so yeah. what's the website again it's howieactingstudio.com okay so make sure everybody h-o-w-e-y there we go you want to yeah. be found on social media or anything or they want facebook to on well instagram? facebook um yeah. and instagram that's the only thing I, okay. that we have and it's just 
little acting articles and stuff on Instagram. There's no pictures, not too much, many pictures. So just just, just go down to the school and say hi. That's the best way to come. <laughs> you know yeah. what? Call me. Book. Call me. Yeah. And then make a time to come down at 5:30 between 5:30 to 6 cuz the classes start at 6. I like to have about 20 minutes to talk to interested people and they like it too. I'm going to show them around and you guys please we'd I'd love to have you come down anytime Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday at 5:30. I'm there at 5. Awesome. You can come down at 5. I'll make him go. Show you. <laughs> I think you'd like it. I'm sure I would. What, what a lot of them say is I'm not only a better actor, but I learn things about myself I never knew. Yeah. Oh you, yeah, you I could see that. You just learn about because, you know. Yeah, and you're out there putting yourself out there and, and learning about different emotions and Yes. Very cool. And we never make anybody wrong, ever. Yep. We never say, what the hell was that? That was dumb. Never. We just say, okay, so we just saw some acting, and uh, let's try to make that more realistic. Yep. Let's try to get some real emotions there. There's no reason ever to put anybody down and make mm -hmm. them wrong and make them feel bad. Nobody ever feels bad in our class. Yeah. And that's, a, that's a big part. Yeah. Constructive criticism. That's what it is. It's it's good, kind, constructive criticism. There's mean constructive criticism that's mean. And then there's the kind, kind, where you bring them to an understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where you're like, okay, let's let's work on this. Yeah. You know, because there's no reason to, to make somebody feel bad or hurt their feelings. No, no, I agree. So we don't do that. I agree. Um, yeah, so... Um, I, I definitely, real quick before we go, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chris Martin on go the Haters Make Me Famous podcast. Um, also, uh, Hempful Farms. I think they're coming out with their new um, Zonka bars are coming coming back. So everybody that's a fan of Zonka bars, be on the lookout at Hempful Farms. Those are coming soon. Um, also, check out this, that, and the other podcasts. Uh, Absolute Geek Podcast and Tales from the Flip Side. Check out uh, Quick Scope Apparel and uh, AZ, AD, uh, let's see here, AZ ADHD Podcast and Strong Heart Academy. Big shout out Strong Heart Academy. I see he's got a he's got a new. Uh, they just expanded. They just expanded, so they got a bunch of new stuff going on, and he's uh, putting in a ton of work. So go check out Mike at uh, Strong Heart Academy. Awesome, and uh, we appreciate uh, Carla Howie coming on and thank you so much. Some cool stories and fun and a pleasure. Yeah, and you're welcome back anytime you want. Um, <laughs> oh, I only got through half my story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, <laughs> I was like this the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, that was awesome. So yeah, we it really appreciate it. Thank you. So, all right, well, I didn't is. even tell you about Michelle Fiverr. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, now you have to come back. <laughs> so. Okay, yeah, okay, for sure. next all time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that is a wrap on uh, podcast episode sixty-four. Bang!